Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace the Minister of State for External Affairs of India, Shri Murali Dara, upon his visit to the kingdom. The minister conveyed the greetings and appreciation of the President of India, Ram Nathakovind, and the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, and their wishes of further progress and prosperity for the kingdom. His Majesty the King asked him to convey his greetings and wishes of progress and advancement to the President and Prime Minister of India as well as the people of India. His Majesty the King welcomed the Minister and hailed the course of bilateral relations and cooperation in all vital sectors and means of developing them. His Majesty affirmed the depth of Bahraini-Indian relations which are based on a history of mutual and joint interests. During the meeting they discussed a number of affairs and regional and international developments of common interests. His Majesty affirmed the importance of international support of development and progress in Afghanistan and continuing to provide the necessary humanitarian aid while respecting its beliefs and values for the security and stability of the region and its people, wishing for peace to prevail throughout the world. His Majesty expressed appreciation for the ongoing efforts of the Indian community in Bahrain and the development march of the kingdom, which also receives the appreciation of the people of Bahrain. For his part, the Minister of State for External Affairs expressed his pleasure in visiting the kingdom, hailing the role of His Majesty the King in developing cooperation and the long-standing friendship between the two friendly countries. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and Deputy Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa Cultural Center Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa and uh, the Assistant Secretary General of Meetings and Committees Affairs at the Shura Council Abdel Nasser Al Siddiqui. Al Siddiqui presented His Majesty with the original 140 year old document of the Zubara and Bahrain calendar, which was among the possessions of the late Sheikh Yusuf Al Siddiqui Library. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation for the dedication and remember the role of the late Sheikh Yusuf in preserving such important documents alongside his important role in Islamic affairs. His Majesty also thanked Al Siddiqui for his interest in such documents and affirmed the special place uh, that the kingdom occupies in connecting various civilizations and cultures and as a center of culture and learning. His Majesty affirmed the distinguished position Bahrain holds with its ancient civilization and heritage and cultural communication with various ancient civilizations and center for culture, science and knowledge, wishing us Siddiqui success in serving his country and society. He ordered speeding up the process of naming one of the streets in Zalag after Sheikh Yusuf. Dr. Sheikh Khalid expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Majesty and affirmed his role as the first in the kingdom's history to establish a center for these documents.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa yesterday received a telephone call from the U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd J. Austin III. During the call, the U.S. Secretary of Defense expressed the U.S.'s gratitude to Bahrain for its continuous humanitarian work, which includes relief the evacuation efforts in Afghanistan. Strategic relations between the two countries were reviewed, as well as regional and international issues. The latest developments regarding the situation in Afghanistan was also discussed, focusing on the importance of strengthening efforts to support security and stability in the region. Coinciding with the start of the new school year, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received a number of educational caters who taught His Highness over the years from Ibn Khaldun National School. His Highness stressed that the support and patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa of Education in Bahrain opened wider horizons in the scientific field according to a well-defined methodology that contributed to the formation and development of Bahraini youth in the scientific field on modern foundations that keep pace with the development of the educational movement. His Highness also praised the interests of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and his continuous support of the educational movement to achieve the goals of sustainable development in Bahrain. His Highness recalled his days at the Bin Khaldun National School and expressed his pleasure to meet the distinguished professors who have taught him. On the occasion, His Highness posted on his personal Instagram account in appreciation of the role of the educational caters. His Highness praised the prominent role of Ibn Khaldun or National School in the development of Bahraini youth and their capabilities and the school's keenness to embrace students and develop their abilities in various fields, wishing success to the educational and administrative bodies and to all students on the new academic year. For their part, the educational staff of Bin Khaldun School expressed their thanks and appreciation to His Highness for his continuous support to the educational movement in Bahrain, adding that His Highness is an inspiration to students. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority GSA and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the President of the Bahrain Combat Federation, Sheikh Ibrahim bin Salman Al Khalifa, the President of the Bahrain Weightlifting Federation, Faris Mustafa Al Kuhiji, and the Bahrain Bodybuilding Federation, Samil Haddad. The visit was attended by the Deputy President of the GSA, President of Bahrain Combat Sports Council, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and CEO of the Authority, Dr. Abdurrahman Askar. The visit comes as part of the continuous communication between His Highness and sports federations and within the framework of His Highness's interest in supporting them to implement plans and programs that contribute to raising the level of sports and its members. His Highness commended the efforts of the sports federations and hailed the outstanding results they achieved in various participations. The president of the, the presidents of the federations expressed their thanks and appreciation to His Highness, affirming that this visit reflects his support to all sports authorities and his keenness to support efforts with the aim of achieving a comprehensive development in all sports. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority, the GSA, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, yesterday visited Bahrain Handball Federation, Bahrain Basketball Association, and Bahrain Swimming Association. The visit was attended by the Deputy President of the GSA, President of Bahrain Combat Sports Council, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and the CEO of the Authority, Dr. Abdurrahman Askar. The visit comes as part of the continuous communication between His Highness 
business and sports federations and within the framework of His Highness's interest in supporting them to implement plans and programs that contribute to raising the level of sports and its members. His Highness met with the President of Bahrain Handball Federation, Ali Isa Ishaqi, the President of Bahrain Basketball Association, Captain Walid Abdul Hamid Al Alawi, and the President of Bahrain Swimming Association Consultant Dr. Mohammed Ahmed Mujbil. His Highness commended the efforts of the sports federations and hailed the outstanding results they achieved in various participations. He urged them to continue working to develop the sports sector in the kingdom. The presidents of the federations expressed their thanks and appreciation to His Highness, affirming that this visit reflects his support to all sports authorities and his keenness to support efforts with the aim of achieving a comprehensive development in all sports. An agreement signing ceremony was held yesterday between the Supreme Council for Women, STW, represented by its Secretary General Halal Ansari and Dr. Sheikh May bin Suleiman Al Atabi, representing Mayasim Holding Company. Al Ansari affirmed that the STW is working under the wise directives of its president, wife of His Majesty the King, Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, to include a package of flexible and qualitative measures to sustain the presence of women in national economic affairs in the next phase of the National Plan for the Empowerment of Bahraini Women. Under the agreement, the STW assigned Mayasim Company to provide advisory and development services to the Riyadat Center and support for Bahraini women entrepreneurs to take advantage of the economic opportunities available at the national level and motivate them to innovate, create, excel and develop products to meet the required quality and specifications locally and globally. Al Ansari expressed pleasure with the developments of the center, stressing the council's support for all efforts contributing to the development of Riyadat. For her part, Dr. Sheikh Hamey expressed her thanks and appreciation for the role played by Her Royal Highness, the President of the SCW, to the, the SCW to support the progress of Bahraini women in all fields, stressing the importance of the role assigned to the Bahraini Women's Development Center Riyadat. The National Communication Center organized in cooperation with the Ministry of Education a press conference on the start of the new academic year. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Naimi, discussed uh, returning to school by highlighting the achievements of the previous year in the presence of the CEO of the Communication Center, Yusuf Al bin Khalil, and members of the press. The minister discussed how education was conducted while observing the guidelines as per the traffic light system. He affirmed that the ministry has printed books for the new year and that uh, virtual classrooms have been abolished because they have been replaced by the schools which themselves run their own virtual sessions now. The minister discussed the efforts uh, to maintain schools and expand premises along with the implementation of the latest technologies in the classroom. He visited a number of schools this morning to oversee the efforts that are being made by their staff to carry out the ministry's collective mission. He then listened to a briefing on these efforts along with a number of initiatives such as hotlines for parents, technical support, academic support and other measures. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, met with his Indian counterpart, Subrahmanyam Jishankar, who is visiting the kingdom. Dr. Zayani welcomed his counterpart and appreciated the deep rooted bilateral ties on all levels, thanks to the royal directives in this regard. The minister presented the outcomes of the meeting that was held in New Delhi and said that the kingdom would like to continue to increase cooperation with India on all levels. For his part, the Indian minister expressed his pleasure in visiting the kingdom and the state of the bilateral tie and the, of the state of the bilateral ties based on mutual respect, and affirmed his country's wishes to further develop these ties in all fields. He wished the kingdom ongoing prosperity and success. The Minister of Labour and Social Development, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan, announced that the compliance rate with ministerial edicts regarding the prohibi prohibition of working under sunlight and open places during the afternoon period from 12 noon until 4 p.m. in July and August of this year has reached 99.8%. Hamidan praised the commitment towards the afternoon work ban by many institutions and establishments, noting that the ministry carried out 
11,342 inspection visits to work sites throughout the ban period. Only 22 violating establishments were monitored, while the number of violating workers reached 33, and those violations were referred to the judiciary. The minister stressed that Bahrain is proceeding to update the occupational safety and health legislation in accordance with international labor standards, which reflects Bahrain's high status in respect to human rights. The Director General of Women Police, Brigadier Muna Abdurrahim, met with a delegation from the International Police Association, IPA, which comes as part of interaction with regional and international organizations to exchange expertise and bolster cooperation. To speak more about this, we are joined on the phone by police officer at the Juvenile Care Center at the General Director of Women Police, Captain Marwa Al-Abbasi. Welcome to the news, Captain Marwa. Thank you. Can you tell us, please, about the significant development of Bahrain's women police and the cooperation with international bodies, such as the International Police Association? Yes. Uh, well, 50 years after the establishment of regulatory police in Bahrain, it became apparent that women police were needed to manage certain responsibilities. So in 1970, the first women police were introduced into the ministry. Uh, making it one of the first Arab countries to establish a women's police force. Two women holding college degrees were put in charge of handling matters pertaining to women and children, as well as juvenile offenders. Uh, women police continued to grow in numbers over the years, and so did their responsibilities, which included handling family matters pertaining to women and children, managing juvenile delinquents prior to and after the establishment of the Juvenile Care Center in 1984, and they were responsible for the care and rehabilitation of adult female offenders. They also participated in duties and, uh, related to passport and immigration, as well as security, pat-downs and searches, and they were given office responsibilities at the Traffic Directorate. In 2004, along with the establishment of the Royal Academy of Police, the first batch of police, uh, female police officers holding college degrees was enrolled, graduating at the rank of lieutenant. From that point onward, the role of women police in the kingdom grew to encompass the various fields and administrations of the Ministry of Interior, including infantry training, VIP protection, 999 operations, uh, community policing, and security administrative jobs, and more. The year 2013 also marked the creation of Bahraini Women Police SWAT Team for rapid intervention. This was the first female SWAT team in the DCC. With the increasing support of His Excellency General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, women police now hold some of the most esteemed positions in the Ministry of Interior, such as Assistant to the Head of Public Security and Consultant to the Minister of Interior for Women Police Affairs. They also had several branches and units, as well as administrations within the Ministry of Interior. Of course, cooperation with national and international organizations by participating in or attending conferences or workshops and even training events, provides the Bahraini Women Police with opportunities to advance and progress and further empower female police by exchanging experiences, building on existing knowledge, and offering assistance when needed to ensure the success of women police around the world. One of the biggest feats for the Bahraini Women Police was establishing and training the first Kuwaiti pol women, women police force in 2008, after which um, the training was continued by Bahraini women police from 2009 until 2012, through which uh, the Kuwaiti women police were equipped with the required military and leadership skills. The General Directorate of Women Police promotes the continued cooperation with international bodies, such as the International Association of Women Police, the IAWP, and the International Police Association, the IPA. In the recent meeting held at the General Directorate of Women Police, delegates from the IPA joined the Bahraini Women Police in a fruitful discussion about the successes of women police, our mutual interest in promoting the protection of women, children, and youth globally, and the importance of maintaining cooperative relations. Women police in the Kingdom of Bahrain have come a long way since 1970. God willing, and with the continued support of His Excellency General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and our esteemed leadership, the Bahraini Women Police will continue to grow and thrive 
and work relentlessly alongside our male co-workers to protect and serve our country to the best of our abilities. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. That was police officer at the Juvenile Care Center at the General Directorate of Women's Police, Captain Marwa Al-Abbasi. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,146,939 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,088,446 had taken the second, and 253,742 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and to take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 951 with 110 recoveries and 87 registered new cases. 30 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 44 are contacts of active cases and 13 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.